with that mind back and forth. Uh, and the Bible says that we need to try the spirits uh, to see which ones be of God, uh, which ones are evil. Uh, amen. There are times in our lives uh, where we listen to the wrong one uh, and we allow the wrong one to lead us uh, and we do the wrong things. Uh, but I'm thankful this morning uh, that God is just uh, and He's able uh, to forgive and He's able uh, to reestablish in our lives uh, and to help us to be uh, the Christians that He wants us to be. Uh, if we can just overcome that mind. The Bible says, Hey, with the heart man believeth unto salvation. It doesn't say with the mind that you believe it, but with your heart that you believe it. And we battle that mind back and forth, back and forth. And the mind is where the devil is able to get to. He can't get to your heart. He doesn't have dominion there. But what he tries to do is get in your mind and get you to believe things that just aren't true. And if he can get you to believe that God didn't create the heavens and the earth, if he can get you to believe that there wasn't a flood, if he can get you to believe that you're not saved or you're not where you need to be at, or in all these things that he's able, then he can begin to, to work in your heart. But we've got to treat the mind like the birds of the air. We have those thoughts that come through. Hey, and you can't stop those from coming through. Evil thoughts will come in your mind that you can't stop. But how long they stay, that is in your ability. Billy Graham said it like this. He said you can't stop the birds from flying over you. But what you are able to stop is them building a nest in your hair. Hey, when evil thoughts come in, we've got to push those things out. We've got to get rid of those. We've got to rid ourselves of the things of this world. What consumes the mind will control the life. And if all you take in is wickedness and darkness and the things of this world, that will be what you produce out of the abundance of the heart. The mouth speaketh. You say, I don't, I'm not that kind of person. I don't say those things. I don't talk that way. I had a guy at work. He said, I just cuss when I get mad. I said, that's fine. My pastor always said, that means you only steal. Amen. When you're tempted. He looked at me awful funny. I said, if it's in there, it'll come out here. You can't be one thing. The Bible says this. We can't serve God and name it also. What's in your heart will come out your mind. Amen. What we don't understand is every service, thank you Lord, there's a battle that takes place right here. Inside these four walls, there is a battle that takes place. It's not flesh and blood, Tyler. It's not what we can see, but we see the effects of it. We don't see the warfare taking place. But I see it each and every time we come in. I, the Spirit of God wants to flow freely and wants to be here. Uh, and we have those uh, that get in the flesh. Uh, the Bible says that the flesh is what? Uh, enmity uh, against God. Uh, you cannot uh, be in the flesh uh, and please God. Uh, it's not about what you want. Uh, it's not about what you think. Uh, it's not about what you believe. Uh, it's about the Word of God. Uh, it's Amen. about serving God. Uh, it's about praising God. Uh, and we've got to get to a point uh, as Paul says. And, uh, that we keep this flesh uh, under subjection uh, that will crucify the flesh uh, daily uh, and follow after Christ. Amen. Here's so many people saying, well, I love the Lord. Uh, the Bible says if you love God, you'll do what? You'll keep His commandments. Amen. Amen. You can't just say, uh, and in fact, uh, the New Testament writers, uh, when they were writing of God's love, uh, and they were trying to do all the translations uh, into the English language, uh, I was listening to one of Billy Graham's older messages, uh, and he started talking about agape. Uh, and the word agape is infinite, uh, infinite love. Uh, it's endless love. Uh, it's unconditional love. Uh, they felt like, as they were trying to translate, uh, that there wasn't an English word uh, that was strong enough uh, to capture the love of God. Uh, why is that? Because... Uh, we say all in the same sentence. I love my wife. I love my job. I love God. I love the church. Hey, those are four different types of love. You better love God above loving your wife. Above loving your job. Above loving the church. You've got to have a love for God. That's equivalent to His love for us. It can't match. It can't be anything. Hey, I'm telling you. 
from any love that you've ever felt before. But there's something that happens in the mind. And I'll get to the passage of Scripture in just a minute. There's a warfare that happens in the mind that blocks so many from being able to understand that love of Christ toward you. There's a block that takes place where you can't fathom, you can't understand that love. In fact, the Bible says that we can't understand uh, what is the breadth, the depth, the height of God's love toward us. I think that's in Ephesians. Uh, we can't fully understand uh, God's love for us. That's like grace. Uh, you don't need to understand grace. Uh, you don't need to, need to know what grace is. All you need to realize is we didn't deserve grace, uh, but grace is what God gave us. Uh, you can't work for it. You can't buy it. Uh, there's nothing you can do to earn it. Uh, you've just got to accept it. God's love uh, is the same way. In fact, uh, John tells us uh, that God is love. Uh, and then, in fact, uh, he also said this in Corinthians, I believe it is. Uh, uh, Paul said, uh, I need not write to you about love, uh, for your love cometh uh, from above. Uh, hey, uh, trust we have to learn. Uh, faith we're given and have to believe. Uh, but love is instilled in us. Uh, and I know that because uh, from the moment you get saved, uh, the Bible says you know uh, that you pass from death uh, unto life because you love uh, the brother. Uh, there's not enough time uh, in a 15 second prayer uh, or a 30 second prayer uh, for you to learn how to love. Uh, God just gives you love. Uh, and it's time uh, that we see that love uh, and use that love one to another. Well, we've got to be able to overcome the mind to do that. We've got to be able to overcome our mind to do that. We're going to read here three verses in 2 Corinthians 10. And I've been sick for a week. We'll see how long my voice lasts. It'll last just as long as the Lord wants me to preach. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in 10 and 3 in 2 Corinthians, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringeth into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. You can be seated this morning. I thought this, evil thoughts are like suicide for the soul. What happens with that is uh, when evil thoughts come into mind, uh, just as those birds fly, uh, if you allow those evil thoughts to nest uh, in your heart, uh, they will slowly begin to kill your soul. Uh, you have got to get those things uh, out of your mind. Uh, you have got to get those things uh, out of your head uh, and allow the good things of God uh, to come back in. Uh, and Isaiah said this, uh, that will keep him in perfect peace uh, who Whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in me. We have got to keep our mind on Christ and keep it on him continually. If you can keep your mind on Christ continually, the things of this world won't begin to come in and choke the things of God out. We read about that. That mustard seed, uh, and I've preached on this before, uh, uh, but it also works the same way uh, uh, with our minds. But we know that faith uh, is like the grain of a mustard seed. In fact, the Bible says in Matthew, uh, if you have faith, uh, the grain of a mustard seed, uh, amen, you can move mountains. Uh, but we realize uh, that like every other seed uh, that is planted, uh, He wants our faith uh, to grow. Uh, and what I'm thankful for uh, is once I begin to study that mustard seed, plant, uh, it begins to grow uh, and it'll choke out uh, all the things around it, all the under vegetation uh, around it. Uh, but in your mind, uh, it's like a weed uh, and anybody who's got a garden, uh, that weed uh, will come up uh, in the garden uh, and it'll begin to spread uh, and grow uh, and choke out the vegetation, uh, the good things uh, that you want. Uh, if you don't do what with that weed, uh, you can't just chop it down. Uh, you've got to pluck it up by the roots. Uh, you've got to stop where it comes from. Uh, 
You say, Austin, I, I struggle with these evil thoughts. I, I struggle with these things in my life. Uh, what do I need to do? Uh, you've got to get down in there uh, to the root of that problem uh, hey, and allow God uh, to get rid of it for you. Uh, until, uh, as long as you keep cutting it down yourself, uh, it'll keep coming back up. Uh, but when you allow God uh, to get in there uh, and dig that bitterness out uh, and to give that, dig that jealousy out uh, and to dig all those things out, uh, that's when they'll begin to quit growing in your life. Amen. We realize our life is like that of a garden. The Bible says we're supposed to have fruit. We're supposed to bear fruit. Amen. In fact, not only are we supposed to bear fruit, but we're supposed to continue to bear fruit. What's the one thing that can destroy a garden faster than anything? <laughs> I was going more with the draft. The year was good. There's one in every crowd. He's in my family. Don't you normally say the back about you miles in Other than deer, a drought, lack of moisture, lack of rain. In fact, whenever I was a when I was a kid, uh, my, my great grandfather, the property that mom and dad lived on, he owned that and they had corn in, in both fields and and they, would, they had uh, hand dug an irrigation system in there. Uh, and they would put a pump down in the creek and actually pump creek water, river water, uh, up and through that sprinkler system to water that garden. Uh, that way in the dark, in the, in the, in the, in the, uh, the, the, the hot parts of the summer, uh, that that crop didn't begin to shrivel up. Uh, it didn't begin to dry out. They needed that moisture. Uh, yes. Let me tell you what happens in Christians' lives. Uh, yes. I've seen it too often. Uh, they sit in the church pew uh, and begin to dry out. There's a drought uh, yes. that happens in there life yeah. uh, and then the weeds begin to grow. Uh, it's a funny thing I never thought about until just now. Thank you Lord. Uh, that uh, weeds don't seem to have a problem uh, when there's a drought. In fact, uh, they can grow with or without rain. Uh, only the vegetables of the garden only the good things uh, need that water to grow. Uh, hey, uh, you know what will happen when you begin to dry as a Christian uh, is the weeds in your life will begin to grow uh, and they'll begin to choke out uh, the good things of God. Uh, allow God uh, to water in your life this morning. Uh, break up that pile of ground. Uh, allow God uh, to work in your life. Uh, break up that hardness. Uh, break up all those weeds. Uh, rip them up. Uh, choke them out. Uh, and allow the goodness in your life to grow. You say, how do I do that? You listen to the Word of God. You pray. Seek His faith. Read your Bible. Don't allow yourself to, to get stagnant and satisfied. Yeah, amen. I preached this a while back. And I don't know why the Lord gave it this morning. but It seems that nowadays the, the most popular song in a church is I shall not be, I shall not be moved. They just stop there. It doesn't matter what you do, you ain't going to move people no more. They're stagnant and satisfied where they're at in their life. Uh, don't want growth. Uh, don't want to step up. Uh, hey, why? Growth comes from what? Uncomfortable situations. Uh, you can't sit on a church pew uh, and grow uh, because you're comfortable sitting there. Uh, uh, Fred, I'd like to take it to the board. Uh, and let's get all these, uh, all the cushions taken off these pews. Uh, we'll take the carpet out of the church. Uh, turn off the air conditioner. Somebody say amen right there. Uh, turn off the air conditioner. Uh, amen. Open the windows. Uh, turn off the electric. Uh, and see how many people still come. Uh, no. Uh, they'll go to Falling Rock. Uh, Sand Run. Uh, Burke. Uh, Bethel. Cold Springs. Why? Because they got padded seats. Because uh, they got an air conditioner. Because uh, they got electric. Because uh, they got carpet. Uh, it's all about our comfort. Uh, but growth doesn't come uh, when we're comfortable. Uh, we've got to get to a point uh, where we say, God, I want you. Uh, I don't know how it comes. Uh, I don't know what I'm going through. Uh, doesn't matter. Uh, I want to grow. Uh, I want more in my life. Uh, and that we get up and begin to move for the glory of God. Amen. Before y'all don't come back tonight, we'll still have the carpet, we'll still have the pads, we'll still have the air conditioner, we'll still have the light, we'll still have all those things. But you've got to get where I'm coming from. I've gone to those churches out in the booths. Oh, and I meant to say, we'll take out the bathroom, put an outhouse back in. Then it's out. <laughs> she was with me till I sent back them. Been to those churches that are like that. You know why people got up and shook hands? 
They couldn't sit there no longer. <laughs> those pews were about to, I mean, just tore them up. Yeah. Been in those churches where the where the church pews are about that wide on the bottom and about that high on the top. That'll break your back, amen. I'm telling you, you jump up to testify because your legs don't went numb. <laughs> I'm telling you, we got to get to a point where we'll move for the Lord. Yeah. We'll move for the Lord. Yeah. But what happens is we battle that, that battle of the mind that we can't see. And it goes on. It goes on in my life. It goes on in your life during the service. Amen. Yes, you can. in hiding 
trying to keep all the world out uh, from coming in to take what they've got. Uh, they'll turn into a bitter, bitter, sorry, evil uh, person. Uh, they'll turn into somebody who hates themselves. Why? Because the love of money uh, is the root of all evil. Uh, and those, uh, hey, they think, I, I talk to people at work a lot. Uh, oh, if I could just win the lottery. Uh, I'd say if you'd just win the lottery, uh, you'd wish you never had. Uh, I'm telling you, it's not chance and coincidence that we live on, uh, but grand uh, design. Uh, and we've got to realize who we believe in. Amen. Amen. If you're going to overcome those thoughts, you've got to know. Paul said it like this. For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed uh, uh, unto him against that day. Uh, Paul said, I know who I believe in. Uh, I know what he's able to do. Uh, if I'll trust in him. Uh, hey, if your belief uh, is not in Christ this morning. Uh, if your belief uh, is not in a Christ holy God. Uh, if your belief uh, is not in a Savior uh, who can take you to heaven. Uh, your belief is in the wrong place. Uh, and you need to trust Jesus this morning. Amen. Your belief has to be in the right place. Amen. John, uh, the book of John, the sixth chapter, somewhere along around verse 66, uh, Jesus talking about uh, eating of his flesh, drinking of his blood. Uh, the Bible says uh, uh, many, uh, many of the disciples at that moment, uh, they said this is a hard saying, uh, and walk no more with him. Uh, their belief had to be wrong. Uh, if you walk no more with Christ, uh, your belief has got to be off. Uh, your belief has got to be in something other than Christ. Uh, if you don't follow with Him, uh, those that backslide against God, uh, you say, no, they still believe in God. Uh, maybe so, but not enough. Uh, because if you believed in God uh, and fully trusted in Him, uh, you would not leave His side. Yeah, amen. That's good. So the belief may be there, Daniel, but it's not strong enough to keep them. It's not a Paul-like belief. Paul said, not only do I believe, I'm persuaded that that which I've committed to Him, He'll keep against that day. What day is that? That's the day of uh, that's the day that's coming. Uh, the day of Christ. Uh, when He comes back, uh, Paul's saying, uh, I believe in eternal life, uh, and I believe in Jesus, uh, and I believe if I trust in Him, uh, when that day comes, uh, and I stand before God, uh, it'll all be well in my life. He said many of his disciples walked no more with him. Why was that? They must have just believed that he was a good man. They must have just believed that he was like one of the other prophets. They didn't believe like Peter believed. We'll get to that in just a second. Because Peter, he looked at Peter and he said, will you also go away? Peter said, oh no. Now that's the words of eternal life. Amen. He believed that he was what? He believed that he was that Christ. Amen. Uh, we preached on that a while back. Uh, he believed that he was that Christ, the Messiah, the coming one, uh, the Son of God. Uh, he knew his belief was in. Uh, the others must have believed uh, in the miracles they saw. Uh, must have believed uh, in the good man he was. Uh, but Peter believed uh, that he was the Messiah. He was the one. Uh, he was God uh, in the flesh. Uh, and he was able uh, to give Peter uh, what he longed for. Uh, he was able, uh, maybe this morning, uh, what you're longing for uh, in your life uh, is a change. Uh, you've got to believe in Christ. Amen. Amen. We know this. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Our, our mind, our, our, our flesh. When we read in the Bible here, whenever it talks about the flesh, it's talking about your mind. We realize it's talking about your mind. It's talking about that battle, that spiritual battle. The flesh and the spirit. And that constant struggle back and forth. It says if you're following after the flesh, if you're listening to the things up here and not following after in here, you cannot please God. When I pray, normally I pray before I preach, and the Lord just didn't uh, have me do that this morning. Uh, oftentimes I pray, Lord, close the ears and open the heart. Getting something in here doesn't make the change. Yeah. Getting it in here will. Right. 
I don't know how many times my mother and father would tell me right from wrong, and they got in my ear. It just didn't go nowhere else in my body. Because I'd go right out and I'd do wrong. What I pray when we come here and I preach is not that I tickle your ears, I make you feel good about yourself up here, or do anything else. I pray that what comes out of here enters the hand of God, and He'll take it right straight to the issue you got going in your life, where I can't touch, where I can't get to, where I'm not able to preach at, that the Holy Spirit would then make intercession for you, and allow that Word to reach the need. Amen. we got to know who we believe in. The second thing we've got to do is disregard all other options. Yeah. When it comes to believing in Christ and overcoming the mind, there cannot be a plan B. There cannot be a backup plan. Uh, I've said it myself. I, I'm sure Daniel's probably said it himself. Gary's probably used this before. And I've heard people testify this before. Uh, they say, just try Jesus. Uh, the world will always take you back. Uh, I, I, the Lord spoke to me a while back and said, don't give them that option. Uh, don't even plant that seed. Uh, don't even let them think that way. Uh, let them know, uh, once you try Jesus, uh, you won't want the world. Uh, you won't want nothing else. Uh, you won't want to go back. Uh, once you grab a hold of Him uh, and He changes you, uh, you won't want any of that. Uh, but too many people uh, come to the altar, uh, get saved with the belief, uh, I can always go back. And as long as that is in your mind, you always struggle with that. Every hardship, uh, every trial, every tribulation, uh, everything that comes up, uh, the first thing that the devil will use against you uh, is just turn back. Uh, just give it up. Uh, you never had it. Uh, you're not saved. Uh, hey, I'm telling you this morning uh, that God's able to keep you uh, through the hard times, uh, through the hardships, uh, through the troubles, uh, through the trials, uh, if you'll trust fully in Him. After him, if I trust him with my whole heart, we've got to follow after him with our whole heart. 90% is not good enough. Amen. 90%, those of you that attend school, 90% is an A nowadays, right? It wasn't college. All I, was, all I was aiming for, really, all I was really aiming for was 75. I just wanted to pass. I just wanted to pass. You know how many Christians? Thank you, Lord. You know how many Christians have that mindset? I, I just want to get through. I just want to barely get by. No, aim, if you're going to aim for something, why not aim for the best? Why not aim for 100%? If I could go back and start in sixth grade and do it all over again, I'm telling you right now, I'd ace every class. Because now I realize all you got to do is do the work. I would work harder at trying to get out of the schoolwork than just doing the score. You kids listen. This is Evan, you listening? You're looking at me, so you must be listening, right? All you've got to do uh, is do the work, Ty. That's all you got to do is just do the work. Uh, I've got their attention this morning. Uh, hey, I'm telling you, as Christians, uh, if you'll just do the work, uh, if you'll just put in uh, the effort, uh, if you'll just come like you're supposed to, uh, seek Him like you're supposed to, uh, trust Him like you're supposed to, uh, 100% uh, is what you can get. Uh, quit aiming uh, for something less than your best. If you give God your best, it'll be God blessed. But anything less is second best. Man. That's the Lord. I'm telling you this morning, if you'll trust in Him, if you'll just trust in Him, you have no idea what He's able to do in your life. If you'll fully commit to Him. But you've got to disregard every other option out there. You've got to say, no, that's not going to work. I'm not going back. There's nothing... Back there for me. There's nothing back there. Elisha. Elijah comes and lays the mantle on him. He wanted to go back. Tell his mother and father bye. Elijah says, never mind. Never mind. Said Elijah. Elisha went back. Killed the ox. And burnt the plow. What in Elisha's life did he have to go back to? Nothing. He, he literally destroyed Every option he had to turn back to. You know what I've done in my life with Christ? I've burned every bridge behind me. I've got nothing to turn back to. I've got nothing to go back to. 
You've got to get to a point uh, where you don't even think about the past. Uh, hey, you don't even think about, uh, hey, uh, uh, my brother, I would have apprehended this one thing, uh, but this thing I must. Uh, uh, forgetting those things which are behind, uh, I press toward the mark. Uh, for the, uh, uh, I'm sorry, forgetting those things which are behind, uh, I look forward to the things that are ahead. Uh, I press toward the mark for the prize uh, of the high calling of God. Uh, you know what Paul's saying? Uh, he's saying there's nothing back Ooh. there. In fact, he said this, uh, the Ooh. things that I thought were dead. I now count as lost. The things I thought were lost, I now count as gain for the glory of God. Hey, there's nothing to turn back to in your life. I've heard your testimonies. Your life wasn't that good before you met Christ. Don't let the devil try to tell you it was. My life wasn't. It wasn't any good before I met Christ. That's why I'm able to sing with Beverly and, and the group. He's the best thing that ever happened to me. You can only sing that song if He's the best thing that ever happened to you. But as long as there's a plan B, He's just something that happened to you. You've got to get Him to be the best. Because when there's something out there that's the best, you're not turning back to something that's less. You're not going back to something that's not what God has given. You've got to disregard every other option. Joshua said this, he said, This book of the law shall not depart from thy mouth. Thou shalt meditate in it day and night. Then thou shalt have good success, and all thy ways be prosperous. Joshua 1 and 8. Now you kids listen. The, 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 your teachers, all those that are around you, the people of this world, they're going to tell you, you've got to live a successful life. I'm telling you this morning, if you want to live a successful life, you put your nose in this book. Amen. If you want to live a successful life, if you want to live a life that's well-pleasing to God, you can be a nurse, you can be a doctor, you can be a bus driver, you can be whatever you want to be. Uh, as long as first uh, you're a Christian, uh, as long as first uh, you follow after God, uh, and you'll live a successful life. Uh, you may not be rich, uh, you may not have the biggest house on the block, uh, or the nicest vehicles, uh, but your home uh, will one day be in heaven, uh, and that's worth it all. Yes. Glory. 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 Glory to God. You can give all that carnal stuff aside. If you'll trust in God first, He'll give you just exactly what you need. Won't He, Montana? He'll give you exactly what you need, won't He, man? Every test that you shouldn't have passed. Every class that you decided, no, I'm going to go to church tonight. God, you, I'm going to, I'm just, I, I, I've been trying to study. I ain't going to stay home. I'm going to trust you tonight. I'm going to go to church. Uh, and God, you provide for me. Uh, does He come through, Danny? Uh, will He not come through for those uh, that will put Him first? Uh, I'm telling you, God is able. Uh, if you'll put your hand, uh, your little hand, uh, in His big hand, uh, you will always be more in your life. But you've got to take His Word above yourself. You've got to trust His Word above yourself. It doesn't have to make sense in your mind. If God said it, you just got to believe it. He said this, Straight is the gate, and there is a way that leadeth unto righteousness, and few be there that find it. For broad is the gate, and wide is the way that leadeth unto destruction, and many be uh, there at. Uh, you say, uh, uh, well, why would you use that right there? Well, uh, what I find is more and more people... Uh, Trusting their way uh, and finding the broad path. Uh, trusting what they believe uh, and finding the broad path. Uh, you might be uh, on a road that feels like you're all by yourself. Uh, hey, uh, there'll be less uh, on the road uh, headed to heaven than there is on the road leading to destruction. But you've got to trust in God. It don't have to make sense. It does not have to make sense in your mind. You think it made sense in Sarah's mind when God was going to give him a child at the right age of 90? No. In fact, just said she laughed with herself, right? It didn't make sense in her mind. You think it made sense in Elisha's uh, uh, little servant's mind when he opened the door and all those men had surrounded him? You think before God opened his eyes that it made sense in his mind why Elisha was just so calm? It didn't make sense. But I believe Elisha knew this. Greater is he that's within me than he that's in the world. That's why he was able to look at him and say, there's more with us than there is with him. I bet for a split second that servant's like, my goodness.
goodness. Here I've been following you all this time and that's the advice you give me right now? I've been saying, where's the back door? We got to escape hatch somewhere in here? He said, no, Lord, open his eyes. You know what we need sometimes spiritually? It's for the Lord to open her eyes. Amen. And just Amen. let us see. Just let us see what he's doing. Just let us see that he's got his hand on it. Just let us see uh, and know uh, that we've got more with us always than they've got with them. I'm thankful this morning for that. He said these things, that John 16, 33. These things have I spoken unto you that you might have peace. In this world you shall have tribulation. If the verse stopped there, there's a lot of times, especially lately in my Christian walk in my life, I'm reading and the Lord will say, aren't you glad the verse doesn't stop? Yeah. Aren't you glad it didn't stop there? He said, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. He said, hard times might come, but I got you. Difficulties might come, but I got you. Hey, there are going to be things that you face and it won't make sense. But I got you. I've overcome the world. And because I'm an overcomer, you can be overcomers through Christ. But you can't trust in yourself. You've got to trust in Him. I'm going to go here and I'm going to be finished this morning. James chapter 4. He said, From hence come wars and fightings among you. Come they not hence even of your lust. That war is in your members. Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, ye have not, because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss. That ye may consume it upon your lust. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Do ye think that the Scripture saith in vain... The spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy. Now if we stop there, that's, that's, those are a hard five verses to swallow. I mean, James was laying it down right there. In fact, they called them adulterers and adulteresses because they were mixing the things of God with the things of the world. Trying to be a foot in heaven and a foot on the world. Hey, trying to straddle the fence. Trying to walk the line. Trying to have one foot in and one foot out. And that's difficult to swallow. But I'm thankful for verse 6. He said, but he giveth more grace. Amen. Five verses of terrible stuff. Five words to cover. Think about that. He said he'd give us more grace. I got to think about that. I thought, why would he say he'd give us more grace? It's because there's times in our lives we need more grace. Amen. We need more grace. There are going to be times when you fall short in your life. You know what you're going to need? Grace. Grace. But I'm thankful it didn't stop there. Because there may be times that you need grace in your life. There's still more. Maybe Fred needs a little bit of grace. And in our minds we think, oh no, what if they run out? But there's always more. Uh, hey, when it comes to Christ, uh, there's always more. Uh, there's always enough for you. Uh, hey, you need a little grace. Uh, hey, a little grace to go around. Uh, what I'm thankful for, uh, it's just that easy. Uh, that when you need grace, uh, you can come and get it. Uh, and there's always enough for you. Amen. See, if we look through the fleshly mind, the fleshly eyes, and we see somebody come and get saved, we think, oh, I need to say, somebody come and get touched. And we think, oh, I need it healed. There's always enough grace for you. God has an endless supply. He's got more than we'll ever need in our lives. And when the hard times come, just remember this. John told us in 4 and 6 that God would give more grace. So even though we've got grace in our lives because we're saved, when that hard time comes, we can have more. And you can have an endless and an abundant supply of grace for your need. You walked in here this morning, right now, battling that mind in a war. Thank you, Lord. I'll be finished. 
He didn't say it was a basketball game. He didn't say it was a football game. He didn't say it was a game of tennis. He said that it was war. We don't often look at it as strong, but he used that phrase for a reason. Yeah. It is a war. It is warfare in your life. Amen. You've got to look at it as just that. It's not a game that's played uh, with your mind and your spirit. Uh, it's a game that's played. Uh, it's warfare that's played uh, between God uh, and Satan. Uh, between uh, and what they call the God of this world uh, and God Almighty. Uh, and it's a battle. Uh, and each one of us uh, is a pawn. Uh, is a place uh, in that battle. Uh, and every time uh, he talks somebody uh, into leaving church, uh, walking away from God... Uh, Trust in their mind. Listening to those voices. The devil wins. But I'm thankful. Amen. That we can overcome through Christ. If we'll trust in Him. If we'll believe in Him. And we'll follow after Him. We can make it through. But you've got to realize. It's a war. You can't take it lightly. You can't take days off. You're going to have bad faith days. Say amen. Amen. The preacher, the deacons, the congregation, you're going to have bad faith days. You're going to have bad fleshly days. You're going to have bad spiritual days. Amen. You're going to have days when you've got the line by the tail. And you're going to have days when you feel like you're running for your life. It's going to happen. But don't take a day off. Don't back up a step. Don't back off the line. In fact, I'm working on a message right now about not giving up. But the Bible says in Psalm 78 that the children of Ephraim, having, the, 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 having their weapons in the day of battle, turn back again. Against God, you've got everything you need to make it. All you've got to do is stand and fight. You can't back up. You can't turn around. You've got to overcome. Hey, hey I'm telling you, you're you able to make it this morning if you'll stand and fight. As we stand to our feet this morning. You can overcome that mind.